Shalom, shalom, and welcome back to the CodeSearcher.com. You guys, I'm Jonathan, the Code Searcher. And it's about that time again, you guys. You know what time of the year I'm talking about? Passover. Passover's coming up. And before that, we have to reconcile the new year, you guys. And uh, this year's a little bit easier than previous years. And it's not going to always be like this, by the way, this easy. And something you're going to see is, is several communities are going to be on the same Passover this time because um, the equinox and the new moon are back to back. Years before or other times we've had to reconcile this, um, historically and from what, what we get from the historian Josephus and Philo is the way that uh, this time of the year was reconciled was the equinox was uh, reckoned. And then they they uh, reckon the new moon closest to that period. So could it, it could be the new moon before it, or the new moon after. And it just so happens this new moon is the day after the equinox. So it's back to back. It's super easy this year. This means a lot of people are going to be lining up in, on the same calendar. And, and I think that's an ingenious way the father has got us all on the same sheet of music. And not everybody's there. Obviously, there's some people that uh, don't reckon the moon at all. And folks, if if you're following somebody talking about the Zadok calendar and Zadok this and Qumran that, listen, Zadok was David's high priest. And the scriptures are very clear. David kept and observed the new moon. You can find this all in uh, the scriptures in Samuel and uh, and other places where in in um, the Torah there, David kept the new moon, which means Zadok kept the new moon. You guys, okay? So, um, listen. If there, if nobody's teaching you some concrete physical evidence, and it's all just burping and chirping about you know qumran and uh, jubilees and things like that and they're not showing you actual scriptures from the bible walk away from that there's too much confusion there okay and you're dealing with a lot of a pride in in those folks over there they refuse to see what the scriptures tell us conclusively you guys psalm 104 19 the moon determines the moedim and that word in hebrew means appointed times it means the shabbat it means the feast or new moon days. Okay, it's the moon that regulates this. It's who is clock in the sky. So again, if someone is teaching you that their calendar just somehow lines up with the Gregorian calendar, in other words, if their day one through day seven lines up with Monday through Sunday, there's a problem there. Okay, Yahuwah's calendar does not line up with the Gregorian. Don't fall for that. Shabbat is not on Saturdays or, you know, day six, if you want to call it that. If your day six happens to be a Saturday, it's wrong. It's wrong. And I can show you, uh, you know, eight ways from Sunday how it's wrong. All right. So we're going to be reconciling the year very soon. The new moon and the spring equinox begins in like six days. All right. Then we start our count. And our count is going to take us to around April 6th is when the Passover here. Now, here's the thing. It's critical to get this discount done and at the right time of the year because it sets the rest of the year. If you don't get the equinox and, and Passover right, your rest of your, your feast days are going to be off, okay? And we don't want to do that. So we're going to walk this out together. I'm going to get right back into teaching the calendar and the name. It's going to be the primary teachings you're going to find at this channel. And we're going to hit it hard, you guys. Look, I'm wearing my shirt today. All upon his name. Talk about a talk about a conversation starter. Yeah, I got a few of these shirts. Uh, one's about Shabbat, a couple on the name, walking around, starting conversations. It's a great way to meet people. So we're going to be speaking on the name, teaching on the name, and the calendar. We'll also do codes. I got loads of codes, you guys, on the calendar. I've got six or seven that I believe can conclusively show. And here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to start putting together um, playlists for you. Okay. So I'm going to be using all kinds of material here from here and there, not just my own. 
and putting playlists for you together so you'll always have these resources, okay? So again, the Equinox is coming up on March 20th. And I know you can't see that, but it's really there. March 20th, look it up, is the Equinox. The next day is, is Rosh Chodesh, which is new moon. We're going to start our count from there, uh, which means it's Nissan 1 and our, our count going to go to Nissan 1415 um, for preparation. Then we have our high Shabbat, right? The 15th is a high Shabbat. And it happens to be when they left Egypt. So we're going to start in all of this, counting out the days. And by the way, there's nowhere in the scripture that tells you to count an omer. You guys, this is a Jewish Talmudic tradition. The scriptures do not tell you to count an omer. This is the, what they were collecting when they were collecting the manna. By the way, this is where you, who gives them the work week and the Shabbat in Exodus 16. We're going to go through it line by line, word by word, and look at it very hard. Okay. Now. Um, there's also coming the point uh, with the other issue we have with the calendar, which is Pentecost, which is a Greek word that means counting 50. However, this is a misnomer, and it's misleading to actually what's going on. So I'm going to be speaking with some uh, grain farmers in this country and in Israel, and because it's the same grain belt all the way across, you guys. It's the same planting season. It's the same harvest season. And I, I proved that this past season, you guys, where at the same time that there was wheat in the field ready for harvest in Oregon, Idaho, uh, Wyoming, Colorado, Kansas, Arkansas, Oklahoma, all at the same time. And then I post a, a, a video from CNN where uh, Russian soldiers are dropping bombs in ukrainian wheat fields this is the day after i was going through those fields the fields are exactly the same on both sides of the earth i showed you that it's the same grain belt all the way which includes israel by the way israel is not some special place that's outside the box it has to observe the same laws of nature as everywhere else in the world <laughs> okay so it just so happens that that we are in a beep the grain, the barley grain is ripening um, and will be ready uh, for for that harvest. But that's, you know, another thing. We're not talking about barley. And some people confuse this, too, when it comes down to it. When they're waving sheaves, they're waving barley. They're not waving wheat. wheat when wheat is waved, it's loaves. Okay, the loaves are waved. All right, so there's two different things. And we're going to go through that with a fine tooth comb, you guys, all right? So, again, if someone's teaching you a Zadok calendar and a lot of assumptions, a lot of burping and chirping on, you know, how it's reckoned, and they're not showing you any scriptures, it's just coming right out of their mouth, no scriptures, nothing, be cautious of that. Be cautious of that, you guys. Yahuwah's calendar does not line up with Rome's calendar. It doesn't period. Um, and so now's your chance. Here's, here's your chance to start from the beginning at the year and walk it out and see how the moon does determine the Moedim and how it falls into place. And there's no extra days. You're not missing days and adding days. If you're reading that in, in Jubilees, you're misunderstanding what's being said there. The secret of what's being said there is if you don't reckon the new moon correctly, you will end up with 10 extra days every year. Okay? All right. So, again, the equinox is on March 20th. The next day is new moon, and then we're going to start our count. This is going to take, take us to April 5th and 6th, around there. Okay? So, get ready. Get prepared. If you're going to be uh, preparing for um, unleavened bread, now's the time to start getting ready because that that takes a little while, you guys, to get all eleven out of your house. Um, so start thinking about that now and um, and getting ready, so it won't be you know stacked on to you the day before, and and things become very stressful. It should not be a stressful time. If there is chaos in your life and in your seasons of, of feast, there's something not right, you guys. Don't don't take that as a sign that you're over the target and things are normal. If you have chaos going on, 
something's not right. Okay. And I'm saying this because the last year uh, where I spent Passover in Arizona with a remnant house was done with no full moon. It was done with no regard to the moon. And there was chaos everywhere. And, and they thought it was normal. <laughs> and I, I had this sinking feeling in my, in my stomach that this was why there was chaos because it was incorrect. And well, you know, you can lead a horse to water, but you can't force them to drink. You got it. So it is what it is. It just so happens this year that more people are going to be on the same um, calendar by default because Yahuwah has placed <laughs> the new moon and the equinox close together. It doesn't happen like that every year, you guys. It just so happens this year that it's going to line up like that, which by default is going to make it easier for us to reckon the, the new year and the feast. So, all right. I hope this is encouraging you um, and um, you're learning something from, from these little talks. Um, I, you know, everybody knows I've been going through personal things in my life and, you know, I'm coming out of that, you guys. So I appreciate your patience with me. I have not stopped doing codes. I've not stopped doing name codes. Um, it's on hold, but I haven't stopped. Okay. Uh, and we will continue to do that. Um, please be patient with me. Allow me some time to get my life back together um, and get through this divorce. Okay. And so that's all I got for you. So um, you guys just know I love you. I miss you. I miss the teachings. Um, and I'm excited about getting back into that with you. So um, stay strong. Stay encouraged. And by the way, some of you that I, I see that are very bold on your Facebook feeds and your person and you're very just you're hammering that thing. Stay, stay bold. Stand for your faith. I see the con, you know, the, the comments going back and forth in some of your discussions where you guys are hanging, hanging tough and you're not wavering for what you've been taught and what you believe. Be that light, you guys. Now, I'm not telling you to argue and to beat them over the head with the scriptures, but be the light. Be the example and show it. Show them how to do it. Shalom to you. I love you. We'll see you in the next video, you guys.